Just um, what is this movie we're gonna be playing? In? Sorry, it's been a long time coming. We have 15 years in the So it's been a long time to have the opportunity to uh, yeah, transfer for the cup. So I saw that I was just so happy that uh, you know, we advanced, and now we have a chance to. Uh, get your dreams about to have that opportunity. So I'm excited. I was excited. It's so exciting. Just to follow up on that, has there been any time during this tenure with the Avalanche where you felt like this might not happen? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs when I first got to Colorado in 2011. Um, the team was dead last. Uh, some up and down years after that, and then uh, even after the day the last couple of years. And, of injuries and things that happen along the way, you never know if just that opportunity is going to come. So, um, just soaking it all in and trying to embrace the moment and just uh, having a lot of fun. And you know, you just you just never know when that opportunity is going to come. You know, it's been 900 games, 15 years. And when I look at Ben, he's had 30 games in <laughs> one year. I'm like, we're lucky, man. So, I'm, uh, I'm excited to have the chance. Uh, Miko, can you take us into that third period? You guys I think, scored four goals. Uh, what was working for you guys? And just take us through the emotions and the up and ups and downs of that period. Yeah, we, uh, we've done it this year before, too. You know, we've been down there going into the third with two couple goals, and uh, we always uh, stick with it in the regular season, too. And that's what we talked about. You know, we just have to put the second period past us and uh, get over it, you know, and, and uh, we know, uh, you know, when we play the game, you know, we can. We can create chances and uh, come back in games. So, and that's exactly what we did. You know, it's just a strong mentality in the team. Kevin uh, Carr had a hand in five goals. Could you just speak to his game? Uh, there's not much left to be said. I think I uh, ran out of words for it. He's a uh, dynamic um, game breaker, um, kills penalties. Um, Downloads both ends of the ice, humble guy, um, good head on the shoulders, good person. Uh, look, I don't know, there's nothing he can't do. He, he keeps showing us what he can do every night. And, uh, you know, it's we're lucky because we're watching greatness, and uh, you don't see that a lot. Nico, uh, a goal in all four games for this in this series for you. But was it that kind of flipped for you, or what changed, or was it just sticking with it? Yeah, I think sticking with it always, you know, when you when you uh, maybe not scoring, but like I said before, in this time of the year, you know, you don't think about those too much, but just sticking with it and uh, try to do when you don't score, try to do other, thing, other things that uh, help the team win. So that's the biggest thing for every individual. Eric, um, so often you guys have been down in the playoffs and come back, and I'm, I'm curious what the mindset was tonight as opposed to other times in the playoff run that the same things happened. Yeah, I mean, uh, I just think we're resilient. I think, you know, even, even after the third, we went into the locker room the third other time and we just said, hey, boys, we would sign up for this at the side of the third. I mean, this this is a great comeback. I mean, all the pressure is on them. If they lost, their season's over. Uh, so we, we stuck with it and, and put our heads down and uh, knew that if we played the right way and, and uh, continued to play that way, that it was going to come. And, uh you know, I was just super excited and just uh, claw back from that deficit and, uh, you know, come up with the winning overtime. I told, I told Landy, you know, we've been, we've been teammates for 11, 12 years. We've been waiting for this chance to play for the Cup for that long. I told Nate and Mr. Conky that and Nico, and we've been waiting a long time to have a chance to do this, so it's exciting. So even in the locker room, you know, what are your team confident? Absolutely. I mean, uh, this is a... This is a dialed in, confident, uh, hungry group all year. And uh, well, we just we just said that if we play how we can play, that result is gonna come. Guys, uh, I know it's so pretty fresh, but uh, you know, you're gonna have a week off. Uh, can you talk a little at least uh, you gonna, can you talk a little bit about getting some rest, healing up? And the second part of the question is um, which of those teams wins the other series, or you just care that it goes to triple overtime in game seven? Yeah, we got this kind of a with the banged up players, what we have, and but, 
that we used to you know after first round we had a week off too so so it's not nothing new to us and uh from the other series it doesn't doesn't matter at all you know it's uh whoever comes uh that's how we play for so we don't really we don't care at all that's a question peter yeah, Mika, I think you joked earlier this postseason that you tell Joe Sackick you should acquire more Finnish players. Uh, <laughs> what, can, uh, what can you say about the acquisition of Arturi Lackanen? That looks pretty good now, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's good for after period, maybe get a job. GM position, but uh, yeah, he's, you know, everybody knows how good he is. How is he? He is who four checks, he defends hard, he kills penalties, plays in the power play. Scores big goals, goes to the hard areas. What else can you <laughs> ask for a player, you know, a third acquisition? So it's fun to watch, and I'm really happy that uh, we got him, and uh, he's shown why, why we gave, gave, it, gave, it, gave it quite a bit for, for him. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Big question. Dave, Nate, if you could both comment on this, just the comeback from the uh, for the two deficit and, and, and how good it feels to begin with a couple. Yeah, I mean, it feels good. It's a step in the right direction and it was good to, to move past another round. Um, we know the job's not finished, but I think our group showed some, you know, some real good resiliency in that third period. And, you know, we talked about after the second, we still hadn't played our best and you know, felt like we want to give it a, a real shot and start stringing some good shifts together and, and uh, got some big goals and uh, got a, got the job done, which was obviously a good feeling. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, you know, obviously with, uh, with Gabe and EJ especially going this far, you know, we've come a long way and obviously the job's not finished, but I think... You know, we got to enjoy the journey as well and, um, you know, appreciate what we have in front of us. And it's a good opportunity and um, really was a couple of guys like Gabe said. Um, you know, we've, we've been up and we've gotten tired and we should, you know, let's make these guys tired and, and put some of them down and, you know, this is within the room. Uh, we pushed and pushed and we finally got through and uh, it feels uh, awesome to move on. Yeah, Nate, I'm, I'm curious, where were you? Like we were on the bench, we were on the bench on the ice when Arturi scored. And just what's the first thing you saw, first person you hugged, first thing that goes to your head? Uh, yeah, just like he had a wide open net, and I think he went posted in and still gave me a heart attack. But uh, awesome play. Uh, you know, beating his D off the wall and, and, and getting a great tip. And, uh, you know, that's why we, we trade for guys like that, you know, at the deadline. Um, yeah. I trade 10, 10 first rounders for him right now. So, uh, well, I'll be gone when those guys come to the league anyway. So, yeah, but it's a, it's a great, great feeling. And, um, you know, we just kind of felt it. We felt like, you know, even after the third, that, you know, it was our time. And uh, we, we were on the attack and we had the momentum on our side. Uh, it's, it sucks. We've been there. Like I just said, we, we lost a three goal lead to Sigurds at home. And, uh, you know, especially when it sucks, you know, the, the little is quiet and, and people aren't happy. So, uh, like I said, a little awesome play by Lucky to get that tip and, and score. Gabe, you touched on Eric Johnson a second ago. Uh, obviously, you're probably happy to share this game with all your teammates, but how happy are you specifically to be able to share this with him? Was there any time over this last decade where you thought this moment might not come for you? I mean, it's, it's special, no doubt. Obviously, he's, he's been there since my first training camp. You know, he's my first roommate on the road. And, um, you know, and now we're sitting here 11 years later and we're going to finals. Obviously, he's very special. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I'd probably be lying if I told you that I thought we'd be here one day during that 16, 17 season. I mean, that was, that was hard, especially. And I was, you know, as close to rock bottom as you can come when it comes to playing in the NHL. But at the same time, um, you know, showed our resiliency there. And, and obviously this, you know, Joe and C-Mac has done a great job of, you know, bringing our team to what it is today. And, and uh, obviously we've, We've changed some things in how we how we do things around the rink and, and how we prepare and, and how we play and, and it comes to the experience as well. Uh, so you know, and then you start making the playoffs the next year after that, and you start believing, and you start you know 
start seeing progress and start moving. Obviously, losing the second round three years in a row was tough, but you got to trip on the finish line a few times sometimes before you cross it. And, and I think for us, that's that's been true so far. And, you know, job's not done. And, you know, it's going to be another tough series, but we'll get some rest here and get ready to go. Gabe, how would you describe the role Jared Butler has played and helped to build that winning culture you're speaking about? Obviously, he's been big. You know, his you know his voice has been constant in that room ever since he came in and, and started with a tough season for him as well. Um, so, but he but he's been good. You know, he's learned as well as we've gone along, and and has been a good communicator all along and, and systems, and and he's gotten smarter and and knowing how to. How to handle us as players, how to handle schedule, how to handle, um, you know, how to tweak some things here and there. And, and obviously, he's been big. Um, but, you know, the players, we've we've got some really quality people in, the, in that locker room. Uh, and that's uh, that always helps when you're trying to pull towards a common goal. And that's going to be super important moving forward. Nate, you've talked about the guys that you train with in the summer in Halifax. Uh, Marshawn won a cup early in his career, obviously. You know, said you're a very competitive guy. You've seen them go th through this. Now you've got the opportunity. What does that mean to you? Because you've you've talked about the hunger and individual things don't really matter, and you've seen them enjoy team success. Yeah, I think that that's it. Just team success. Um, obviously, I've, I I see those guys and how they're as people and players, and there's a reason why they've won. But, uh, yeah, I'm just focusing on the guys in the room, you know, so, and um, the Gabe's said we have a special group in there. And we don't get to the finals by having uh, selfish guys or um, guys in different directions and not quality people, like he said as well. And um, that's, that's the only focus is far more. And it just starts with game one, whoever we play against, and we'll get some rest and um, we'll keep our intensity really high in practice and be ready to go. Gabe, could you just explain or expand a little bit more on the mental resilience, you know, whether it's playing on the road, um, playing down in a game, just kind of more about that. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's it's the playoffs, and this is what you play all year for. Uh, and so, you know, even when you're down, we were down game four in Nashville, you know, and I, at a late stage in that game, and we just kept pushing, kept playing. And you know, same thing game six in St. Louis in the second round, and the same thing here tonight. It's... You know, obviously we're comfortable playing on the road and, and in the playoffs we know how important these games are. Uh, you can never take a shift off, never a period off. And, and then sometimes that happens in the second second period tonight. We, we weren't playing our best. We take some bad penalties. We turn the puck over and gave them some scoring chances. And, and all of a sudden we find ourselves in a hole. But we were reset um, in between periods and we're able to just go out and find a way to string some shifts together and, and start playing the way we want to play and get on the attack and um, get some bounces, get some some nice individual plays by some guys. And um, and we come out with, you know, heading in overtime on the road in a, in a playoff game. I mean, that's, that's what you're playing for. And, and, you know, you just want to let loose and go play. And and, uh, and that's what we did. And big win for us. Uh, Nathan, you, you, you've got all, all this emotion. You're on the ice. The goal is scored. You see it go in. Did any of you look over your shoulder and see that it was being reviewed? Did any of you kind of stop and say, wait a sec, we may have to play again? Yeah, for a second, you know, the coach just said it was good. Um, Calling the ice was a goal. And it didn't look high from the bench. I didn't even think it, it could be high. So, But obviously, you know, you get a little scared. You get that rush of dopamine and going crazy, you know, and then. I tell you, what about a Western Conference final closeout game overtimes do you like? It appears in two years in a row now, I know. Uh, it's kind of funny, but uh, it was a good bounce. I, I got a tip on the first first shot, and then he just bounced right on my tape. Yeah, a lot of talking going into this series was about Conor McDavid and Nathan McKinnon. And Conor McDavid and Nathan McKinnon, and you know, you come out of the series, you have the series you had in the five-point lead tonight. Just, can you talk about just 
where you think your game is right now heading to the final and, and what it needs for you to, to make it to there. Yeah, I mean, um, so for me, I feel like Taser and I, we just try and be the, the solid rocks in the back, um, regardless of uh, scenarios, make sure that we're getting it to those to those guys, me, Randy, Nico, Lucky, like just an individual. Um, just for me, I just try and try and take it game by game, uh, be consistent and um, there's not much to it. We obviously the job's not done yet, and we're gonna have to stay uh, stay on top of things over the break. But uh, if there's a group that could do it. It's this group. So, okay. Uh, actually, now that you've said it, I think everyone that's come out so far has said job's not done, and, and obviously that's where you guys focus on is. But do you guys maybe take an extra day to enjoy this one a little bit? Obviously, it's a big hill for you guys to get over. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously it's a. It's a cool accomplishment. You're making it to the biggest stage in the world on hockey, and uh, it's exciting. Uh, obviously, you take it in for the night, and then you can feel like you can move on and uh, you really turn your focus to uh, to the next the, the next step. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's what's made this team successful thus far this year. Is we don't look too far ahead, and um, we stay in the moment. So, enjoy this moment for a bit, and then we uh, we go on to the next one. And Terry, can you talk a little bit about your journey of the last 10 months? I mean, you're in this Stanley Cup final, and then all of a sudden that team is near the basement, and then you get traded to this team, and then you score an overtime winner. I mean, uh, what kind of roller coaster has this been for you the last 10 months? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly been a, a little bit like a roller coaster, but I mean, uh, the chance to play for the Stanley Cup doesn't come very often, so you got to make the most of it. And th this year, it's a it's an opportunity for us, and uh, you just uh, got to go out there and take it. Yeah, I heard you describe uh, Jared Bednar's best qualities as a coach in terms of establishing the winning culture that you guys have tried to foster here. Do you mind repeating that? I kind of I just, just heard Jared Bednar's right? best qualities in terms of establishing the winning culture. Yeah. Um, that's the first thing I think of, obviously, just that calm presence behind the bench. Um, he's not a coach that's going to lose uh, lose his emotions, and I feel like sometimes um, it's good to show emotions, but sometimes um, if, if players are seeing that, it might make them on, put them on edge a little bit. So for him, uh, he's always calm. Uh, he always just he trusts us in every scenario, and I think he gives us the freedom to, to do but at the same time gives us the coaching staff gives us those systematic things to, to always fall back on and um i think there's a really good balance here and that's why they've uh that's why they're obviously a great coaching staff and betsy's uh has a resume that he does up until now so for uh, both you guys what was the first thing that went through your mind when the goal went in? Uh, <laughs> hopefully it's an eye sticking <laughs> That was the first thing we thought of? Yeah, well, I didn't really think too much for a while after that, but then I saw that they're going to look for it so or look at it. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah um, but when I saw him with the puck in front, in front, it felt like I was telling him before, it felt like a minute long where he had it on a stick for me, and I was, like, just staring at him. I'm like, I'm just going to go on to that. So um, that was a little bit of a – been an interesting one, but no, definitely excited and lucky. Uh, that's why he's the best. He gets to the net and beats guys, so and that's uh, he gets rewarded. So, yeah, Kale, I wanted to ask about Devon Taves. Um, you and him did about as good a job as anyone has on McDavid in that line. What about him makes him a player who's up for that task? And just how happy are you for him to, to now get the chance to play in a Stanley Cup? Yeah, I mean, we, we all love Taser. Uh, Taser's he's an incredible. And then for us this series, I think uh, obviously all of us is dealing with a major task and being able to manage the uh, dry cycle and make David kind of comparable. And um, for us, it was obviously if you're going to get beat, you got to trust that your partner's going to be there to help you out um, to play that next, whether it's a two on one or whatever. So, to, I feel like we just treat off, read off each other so well. And, um, He's, a, he's an incredible player, and he definitely deserves a lot of recognition for one of the best team in the game, that's for sure. Uh, there was a lot of talk this past, well, last year after you guys were eliminated, of missing Eric Johnson and what he could have, you know, done to help you guys throughout that uh, playoff run. But 
What does it mean to have him not just on the ice, but in the locker room during this run? And, and how happy are you for him to be able to play for him? Uh, it's, I mean, it's unbelievable, obviously. Uh, last series, we, we lose a guy like G and then go and, and EJ step up. And they've been absolutely, they've been incredible for us on the back end. We're in the natural series. And uh, when you have a pairing like that, that works so well together, and they both have the ability to jump up in the play and Bo is just, he's on the cusp, I feel like, every single game of getting that chance of actually scoring. And, um, so that's awesome to see. And like I said, they work so well together. They're good in transition. And um, it's a lot of fun to be on the bench when they're out there. You get to watch two guys move the puck really well. So EJ has been, uh, been amazing. And uh, that pairing is for us has been uh, incredible so far. Arthur, joka vuosi putkeen, kun ratko konferenssifinaalit, ja ei varmaan ollut historiassa kukaan aikaisemmin tehnyt tuommoista, niin kerron Suomessakin, että miltä se tuntuu? Kyllä, se on jotenkin hyvä tuntuu, että nyt tota, äh, ei ole, tota, nyt meidän pitää olla voittaa sitä tänä vuonna, että niin vaan me, niin vaan oli häviävä, häviävänä osa tuolla tota, finaaleissa, niin nyt pitää vaan voittaa tänä vuonna. Jos uko, että siitä on etu, etuaista niin vuoden kokemuksesta? Toivottavasti siitä on, että kyllä siitä tulee taas iso, iso tehtävä, että tulee pystyä, pystyä tota, sen raapi, sen ottelusalan voita siitä, että ei, kyllä siitä on ihan täyden päivätyön saa tehdä. Jared, this team's been through a lot this postseason, going back to Darcy's injury in Game 4 in Nashville, all that off the ice stuff, St. Louis Game 6. This series has been crazy. Can you just talk about the fight of this group to get to this point and get to the Stanley Cup? I, I think that uh, it's such a hard trophy to win. It's a battle of attrition. I think that you no one gets through it without suffering a bunch of like ups and downs and ebbs and flows to series to injuries facing adversity and it's the teams that that get through that the best they're usually the ones that are standing at the end or at least getting to the finals and we faced our share and you know no different for us in the regular season but i'm proud of the guys and even tonight that we didn't play great, especially in the second period. We had some mistakes. They capitalized. And we talked about it after the second and wanted to make sure that we came out and played our game. And we did that. And we gave up some goals after, you know, fighting back into it and had to fight back into it again. So it's just resilience, belief. The guys just wanting to win and the guys stepping up and making plays at key times and we saw that tonight and a lot of fight in our team i'm really proud of them for what they've accomplished to this point and you know our first goal was regular season and then round one two and three and sort of a five-step process for us be the best team we can possibly be get our habits right through regular season and then find a way to advance and continue to try to get better and we've done that and you know, I've been with this team now, this is year six and a lot of growth and, you know, mentally, you know, structurally, just like the whole gamut. So I'm proud of our guys and lots of these guys have been here longer than I have fighting for it. And so they're going to get a chance to play for it now and, and I'm proud of them and hopefully we go out and put our best foot forward and go in the thing. Coach, can you take us through that? Third period. I mean, you get the early goal, but with you know, I think eleven oh three left. You're down four to two, um, and and just what was going on the bench, and you know, you make the comeback, and then they tie it, and going into overtime. Just just take us through that whole process, please. Yeah. Well, so my message and the message that our guys were sending in the room is like, I mean, we talk about a little bit about what people think the pressure's on us coming into the game and whatnot. Well, at 3-1 after two, you know, there's no there's no more pressure. So we might as well go play our game and play loose and, and, and get after it and lay it all on the table. And we get the early one, we make a mistake and give up. Well, you know, we had two turnovers and, and odd man rushes that led to goals against. And you, we've been really good at that all series at preventing that. And 
but on the push a little bit, trying to do a little bit too much, we, we give up another one. And I, I don't think the message changed on the bench. I didn't feel like our guys kind of dropped maybe for, you know, 10, 20 seconds or so when they got the four, the fourth and we just kind of kept going and, and, and really no reaction to our team when, when they um, went up again, we just, you know, at that point it was kind of the pressure was off us and just, it was up to us to just go play and try to get the equalizer a couple times. So, uh, again, I just think it's, you know, that's kind of where our team's got to. It's more mentally tough and resilient than we've been in the past. And, and it's a good group. And someone eventually has to find a way to make a play to, to get you on the board. And, and we did. So, I mean, um, you know, Edmonton, that's, I mean, I know that we're, it sits in games, but that was a tough series. It was a hard-fought series. It's a really good hockey team. Reminds me a lot of us a year or two ago. And um, so tip my hat to them and their season and their turnaround and their, and their players, like the Stars put on a show tonight. It was, it was a really good series, and we're just happy and ecstatic to be advancing. Yeah, Jared, I know there's a – broader goal in mind, but just how important is it to take some time to soak in this accomplishment of making it to a final? I mean, it's important to try and get some rest and try to get some guys back healthy. And I, our, our guys should be, I mean, it's hard, I mean, obviously it's hard to get here. Um, our guys should be really happy and enjoy it, you know, for a couple of days and hopefully we'll get a clear picture on how the schedule is going to work and I don't I don't get the sense that like even in the coaches room the, the locker room everyone's obviously happy for the opportunity that's in front of us but I don't get the the feeling that anyone's satisfied or I mean everyone's happy and that's good but that's not why why we started this season it wasn't our approach to it at the start and it's, it's certainly really difficult to get here, but our guys are already kind of focused and <laughs> we'll be itching to go at some point soon here in a couple of days. Jared, you spoke a lot last year about missing Eric Johnson in the playoffs. Just number one, how happy are you for him to be able to play for the Cup? And this isn't a guy that's you know, playing five minutes a night at the end of his career. This is a, a real player for you. He's an important piece. Just what does he mean to this team and what's he next? Yeah, like I could go through our whole roster, but like with EJ, like he's been here a lot, twice as long as I have and, or more. And um, there's been ups and downs in his career just even since I've been here with injuries and whatnot. And you see guys fight through adversity, change of role. Uh, since, I, since I've been here, when I came here, he was our number one defenseman, played him a lot. We lost him to injury a couple of times. It really hurt us in the playoffs. Uh, this year, he's been able to stay healthy. He seems like he's enjoying himself, just wants to do whatever he can to help our team win. And it's, it, I mean, it's easy to root for a guy like that. And, uh, and you know, two guys sort of in the same boat, um, Helmer, been with us all year. EJ's been with us all year. And they had good regular seasons. They, I, would, I would classify them as good. But once we got into the playoffs, these, these two guys have like kicked it up a, to a whole new level, you know? And so I'm, I'm watching EJ play some of his best hockey I've seen in the six years I've been here. And, and he, he just tells you how much he wants to win and, and how much he's going to pour into it. He's going to leave it on the ice every night. And Helms is kind of the same thing. And both those guys have been different makers for us. So difference makers. So, um, I mean, it's hard not to be really happy for those guys and, and, and share the experience with them. I'm really proud of both those guys. Jared, have you grown as a coach in that six years? And has winning at the minor league level helped prepare you now to be in your first Stanley Cup here? Yeah, well, certainly. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I've done a lot of growth, I, I feel like, in the last six years. And it's all new to you when you first come. And it's a totally different ball game than the NHL from the American League. Um, you know, when I came, I felt like I was really ready for the opportunity. Like I just kind of had this mentality that, 
you know, I was just going to just keep working hard and honing my craft so I was ready for the next level when the opportunity came, if it came. I was fortunate to get an opportunity in the American League after winning in the CHL and, and same thing in the NHL a few years later. And I, it, I wasn't in a rush to get to the NHL. I never played in the NHL. I would, you know, I'd still be coaching today if I was still in the ECHL or the American League. Um, but the opportunities came and I wanted to make sure I was ready. I put a lot of work into that, but a lot of growth over the last few years, no question. And, and not unlike our team, you know, even our stars and our leaders, I just see so much, I mean, we're just a different, they're different as individuals. They're different as 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 a group, and and I feel like I'm part of it. I'm just one piece to it. You know what I mean? And um, so it's been a lot of fun. And and now we're going to get a heck of an opportunity here to go and uh, try and finish this thing off. And I'm I'm just excited and happy. And you know, again, most of, most importantly, I'm really proud of our guys for like sticking it out. It's not easy to do, but we've, there's been a lot of growth even just from last season and the heartbreak that we've had over the last couple of years to be able to be as resilient as we have been to, to get to, to the finals is great. Coach, uh, Kale is talking about how you're such a calming presence behind the bench. And you've talked about that this year, trying to stay even keel and, and all that, but What's going through your head that maybe you don't say out loud from the time Nico scores that goal with, you know, five minutes left all the way through to the, the reckoning game winner? Just kind of what were your internal emotions? Well, I've, I've like a lot of internal emotions through every game, regular season. And obviously playoffs is like, it's more stressful. Um, but it, at the same time, I feel like, like I'm always just kind of like real with the task at hand. I've been always been able to kind of just put away the pass, goals against, you know, the score. It's just like that, that's gone. It's done. The call is done. Whatever it is, whatever the situation is, it's just moving forward. It's only thing that matters is just coming up, your next shift, you know, the next play, the next five minutes. And we've been breaking games down like that, trying to preach it to our team. Uh, and and again, the way the guys reacted tonight on the bench, you know, we, we get within one and then they go up four two. And it's just like, you know, it'd be easy to kind of, you know, show your emotions, get frustrated, lose discipline, whatever it is, but our team's just not doing that. And you know, I'm kind of the same way. Like, it's like, I, I turn the page quickly on that because to me, it's meaningless. We can't control it now. It's already finished. It's why I don't worry about officiating or other things. You know, it's, it's, you know, we lose players to injury and, you know, people ask me all the time, well, what, what was your conversation like with them? Like, I don't even deal with our scratched guys on game day, you know, like I'm just focused on the group that's going, what we have to do to, to have success that night. And then I'll talk to them on the off days. So sometimes they, you know, they have to wait for stuff like that, but that's just the way I am. It's just we're moving forward and whatever we have to do to try to have success that next period or then that, that next game is, is what, is what I try to focus on. So many remarkable things, but seven and zero on the road in the playoffs. So, what's in the water there on the road? What what's what is so special? I uh, yeah, kind of answered this the other day. I I just think it's it, it's just about our game and the way we have to play, and, and I don't think it should matter about the venue or the the environment, the hostility, the crowd, who's cheering us. None of that. I just think it's. It's you have to be focused on what you have to do to have success, and, and it's the same sheet of ice. It's the same opponent. Just, all the guys are playing the same positions. You know what I mean? It seems, seems pretty clear to me. I mean, the more you can kind of focus and take care of that, the more success you're going to have. Last two seconds, right? What's the culture you've been working on? You know, with the team and in the locker room the last six years. Um, well, there's a lot of things, but I mean, to me, it's part of it is the focus and determination that we're seeing from our team. And um, part of it is just like the first thing I talked about when I got here was having like an unselfish team first attitude. That's number one. Um, it's not always easy through seven months of the year, but I, I, I can say that we've gotten to the point where you know, I have meetings with guys and difficult meetings and our whole staff does. And but just to be honest evaluators of themselves and myself and 
everyone is an individual just evaluate your game be honest with that and be unselfish you know they're gonna they're, there's gonna have to be a level of sacrifice from everyone involved in our organization in order to win on a nightly basis and get to where we want to go and i think we've we've developed that over the last you know five six years last question here yeah, Jared, I wanted to ask about Pablo Fritz. Maybe not his best night tonight, but this is a guy who's your number two goalie entering the series, and he led you to a Stanley Cup final. Like, what, what does that say about him? What impressed you most about him throughout this series? Uh, yeah. I mean, to be able to come in in a tough situation, lots of pressure, right? Um, yeah, I've talked about it really is being no different than any other player on our, te on our team, you know? They're not going to be perfect every night. They're not going to I don't like separate them from our group because oftentimes, like every goal that gets scored, someone's making a mistake on it. You know, the goal is under the spotlight because they're the last line of defense. So there's more pressure on those guys. But to just be able to come in and be trust his ability and the work that he's put in and, and Tonight, goal, goal gets scored. They stretch out the lead in the third, and he's made, worrying about the next save, you know? So I love that mentality. It's just business-like approach. Worry about what's in front of you and not behind you, you know? And, and he, he was amazing at that to this series and couldn't have stepped up at a better time for us. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, appreciate it.